I'm just standing below the giant squid at the Royal Antwerp Museum. This organism belongs to a group called the cephalopods, which also includes the octopuses and cuttlefish. All these organisms have soft tissues and they are usually difficult to find uh, in the fossil record. But there are exceptions. There are some forms that develop an external shell. Here is a shell of Nautilus, which is an organism that still lives today. This is a cross-section of the shell showing you the internal uh, morphology of, of the chambered uh, structure of the shell. Such uh, shell will eventually preserve relatively well as a fossil. And here is an example of a fossil Nautilus. Uh, this is the shell itself. Uh, the shell shows the same structures, the same internal structures as the modern uh, uh, form. Similar uh, shells of uh, cephalopods are known as ammonites. This is uh, relative to uh, Nautilus, uh, but this group is now extinct. Now, we're presenting today a fossil that doesn't preserve shell. This fossil comes from the Berkshire in British Columbia. This is uh, in your national park, and this uh, uh, site is famous for the preservation of soft tissues. This site is about 300 million years uh, older than the first dinosaurs, when life was only known in the oceans. So Nectarchaeus was originally known just from a single, very fragmentary specimen, which made it very difficult to reconstruct what it really would have looked like whilst it was alive. Now the field collections that the Royal Ontario Museum has been making since the 1980s have produced another 90 specimens of Nectarchaeus, which are much better preserved and really allow us to give a great image of what Nectarchaeus would have looked like whilst it was alive. Now the important features that these fossils show us uh, include two very large tentacles at the front of the organ, which would have been used for handling prey. It had two large camera type eyes, the same type of eyes that we have. And it also had large fins on the sides of the organism, which would have allowed it to swim actively through the water. Now the most important feature that these Nectarchaeus show, fossils show us is a large nozzle-like funnel, which you can see on the neck of the organism. This funnel was connected to an internal cavity within the organism itself. And this helps us to realise that Nectarchaeus was related to the cephalopods, because modern day cephalopods have a very similar organ structure within their own body. Nectarchaeus changes our view about early uh, cephalopod evolution. Before, uh, cephalopods were thought to have evolved from a creeping creature living at the bottom of the sea, more like a snail with a single dorsal shell. The evolution of a shell was not necessary, as, as we know now from Nectarchaeus to evolve swimming ability.